It's 5 p.m. in Casablanca, Morocco, and I need my telamant or mint tea. So I go to an ATM and I withdraw. Then, around three minutes later, in San Francisco, USA, where I keep a condo and my family, I withdraw another 50 USD. An alert pops up on my phone. Fraud alert. My bank knew. Something was wrong. Of course it knew. It's plain as day. That first clip was from Marrakesh, Morocco, not Casablanca, Morocco. That was obviously suspicious. And this is Casablanca. No, wait. That movie was filmed in a soundstage in Burbank, California. This is Casablanca. And anyway, try though as I might, it's not possible to be in two places at once. Something's wrong. This is exactly the sense my bank had of the situation as well. It's just not possible to be in two different places so vastly far apart from each other, withdrawing money in so close a time frame. Unless, that is, somebody's invented teleportation and didn't tell me about it. And if you're watching this in the year 3000 when they hopefully have invented teleportation, then I sincerely hope the dated reference to a time before teleportation gives you a bit of chuckle and also that my YouTube channel blew up. You can help me with that process, friend. Please like and subscribe. They pay me in open source and coffee. I need the ad revenue. Anyway, in theory, there's nothing wrong with each transaction. Both transactions were properly authenticated. And as far as the bank is concerned, both withdrawals in isolation pass the on-the-spot smell test. Taken together, however, it's clear that something more sinister is afoot. Someone has stolen my money from my account, and I don't like that. As it happens, I really was in Casablanca, Morocco for a conference. I love that place, and my tummy loves Tajim very much. So somebody else was in San Francisco, where I live, trying to deprive me of my coffee and tea money. I don't know who it was. It was probably some exploitive venture capitalist. Those people can be pretty shady sometimes. We'll leave the question of who done it to Daniel Craig and for another time. Imagine what this looked like to my bank though. Two discrete transactions separated by vast distances in geography, signal or noise. The two events form a complex event and detecting these complex events is critical to business in a modern world. Let's look at a tried and true technology to help us detect these events and work with them in our code, Esper, which supports complex event processing, or CEP. Esper provides a full-blown query language that, at first blush, looks like SQL. It even supports the basics of a SQL select query. The difference is that Esper also makes it trivial to work in terms of windows or counts, timeframes, etc. We couldn't possibly begin to appreciate everything that's possible. But let's see how we might solve the problem of fraud detection in a trivial fashion with Esper's queries. Esper works a kind of like a database. You publish events, data, that Esper will persist and then evaluate. It's sort of like continuous queries in other technologies that have them like Coherence, MongoDB, Postgres, etc. Simple enough on paper, sure, but then lots of things are simple enough on paper, like writing Chinese characters. But as soon as you bring skywriting into the mix, things get nuts. There are a lot of moving parts to an Esper application, many of which are invariant from one use of the library to another. So I extracted it all into an auto configuration and a Spring Boot starter. It's got a group ID of com.joshlong and an artifact ID of Esper dash spring dash boot dash starter. The version is 0.0.1. .0 You're welcome. It provides default implementations of all the various objects, but you can override any of these bean definitions in typical Spring Boot style by defining a new bean of your own. Back to the lab. Let's define a new project on the Spring Initializer. Add Lombok and then hit generate. Open it up in your favorite IDE and add the Spring Boot starter for Esper. Then make sure that you override the version of the Janino dependency. You see, Esper requires a version of Genino that is incompatible with the one that Spring Boot will automatically manage up for you. I don't know why this is the case. It's a breaking change in a minor release. I feel like that's a bit of a shame, Genino. Fix that, please. Next, we'll create some events. We're going to deal with three of them, fraud event, customer created event, and withdrawal event. Then we'll create a client that will be our business facade. This client will use the Esper event service to send events into Esper we're going to send those events as maps full of keys and values whose keys map to the columns basically of your, uh, your objects and values map to the values. Then we'll create a customizer to configure the configuration object, telling our database in effect about the two different types that we intend to persist in it, the withdrawal event and the customer created event. Then we'll create a demo application, which will get initialized when the application starts up. We're going to create queries, compile them, deploy them, and then attach a listener. That's what that private final update listener instance is, is a default listener we can use for the first two queries. To make the busy work of registering a query, compiling it, and deploying it less uh, painful, I've created a little method here called register. Let's go ahead and write some code to actually exercise these new APIs 
to create the events that will then uh, trigger the responses from the queries. The first query that will register will be a query that just selects everything from the customer created event. The next example will be slightly more sophisticated. It'll be a query wherein we request all the data and have a where clause. Now this might look fairly similar to a SQL query, but obviously here we're not using a where clause. You can, however, have a where clause. You can actually use the same syntax as you would from SQL. Our final example is a bit more involved. We're gonna create a context, which is basically a, a way of grouping by a certain key and uh, applying aggregations relative to that key. Then we're going to, within that context, look for each withdrawal event where the username is the same and the time is within a certain time boxed window of five minutes and the location is different. This is how we'll determine something to be fraud. At this point, we have the ability to pull out those withdrawal events and create a new event. And what we do with that is entirely up to us. Maybe we publish that as an application context event in Spring's event bus, or we can use Spring integration to put the message on a message channel and send it out to any of the adapters that Spring integration has, like Spring for RabbitMQ, Spring for Apache Kafka, uh, or MQTT, or email, or whatever. The sky is the limit. Complex event processing is a relatively poorly known application of technology that solves an all too familiar problem, recognizing complex patterns in a busy world. Esper is a complete solution whose depth I've only just begun to elucidate in this video. It pairs well with Spring's messaging infrastructure, making it easier than ever to add intelligence to your services and systems.